What's up everybody, Micah here with Tactic California, your source for gear reviews, training, and gun news from behind enemy lines here in California. Today we're doing a review on the Marlin 1895 SBL. If you want a Tack to California t-shirt, head on over to eqfreedom.com, linked below. And if you want to come train with us, we're doing a carbine class every other month and a pistol class in between those months. So every other month there's a carbine class or a pistol class. Sign up for those in the link below, tacticalifornia.net. The Marlin 1895 SBL is an 18 and a half inch stainless lever action chambered in 4570. It features a wood grip and stock, and it holds six rounds in the tube, plus one in the chamber if you wanna run pretty crazy. It comes from the factory of Marlin with the Picatinny rail from XS on the top already, and you've got a peep rear sight with a standard front post front sight. First thing you notice about this gun, in my opinion, is just that it's beautiful. The wood has some serious grain. It's got a real bluish gray stain to it, which just really complements the all stainless metal of the rest of the gun. And it comes with a big loop. That means that the, the loop that your hand goes into to actuate the lever of the gun is actually bigger than a normal loop. And thus it's a lot more comfortable for me anyway, to actuate the lever of the gun. The 18 and a half inch stainless barrel does have deep six groove Ballard type rifling in there and it's a one in 20 twist. The gun's about 37 inches in overall length and it weighs about eight pounds unloaded. Now over the course of this review, I shot as much 4570 as one human can comfortably. Obviously it's a big round, a pretty expensive round, but we shot a lot of it. And I gotta tell you, this thing was accurate right out of the box. It felt very obvious that this thing was zeroed from the factory. I put 300 grain rounds in there. I, I aimed at a target that was about 260, 270 yards away, pull the trigger and I get a ding. Albeit it was a pretty late ding, but it definitely got there with a lot of authority still. So uh, it was good to know that the sights were on target. I had no issues whatsoever until I let the gun get a little dry, specifically the magazine tube. A little bit of grit had found its way into the tube and it was dry. The follower wasn't doing its job properly and kind of forcing half around through the gate at times and really locking the gun up. However, once I disassembled the gun, cleaned the tube, and I fired it a lot since, but I just lubricated the tube, I've not had that issue once. So rest assured, this thing is good to go. Just make sure it's well maintained as any gun should be. Now the length of pull on this gun is, is about 13 and a half inches. I think it's 13 and three eighths if I measured it right. And uh, that mixed with the fact that it's a lever gun, so the rail sits in front of all that lever action, really means if you're gonna put an optic on it, you need a scout type optic. What I mean by this is an optic that has a lot of eye relief so that your head can be comfortably far behind it uh, and still not get any scope shot. I accomplished this by using a Leupold FX2 fixed four power uh, and that worked really well for me. It's actually a handgun optic as you can see behind me, but it is held up to the 4570 just fine. Uh, and if, if it can hold up to 4570, I'm sure it can hold up to anything else. But it's sitting on top of uh, Leupold stainless low rings with the Leupold scope. And as you're seeing here, man, it couldn't be closer to the rail. There's actually a concave cut into the top of the Picatinny rail. And that was a beautiful decision by XS who made this for Marlin because that allows the bell of my scope to sit as low as possible without ever making contact. So that was a really good idea, uh, really good design. Having the contour in the middle of the rail was definitely a wonderful design. All in all, I think the Marlin 1895 SBL chambered in 4570 is a win. I love shooting this gun. And I'm sure if you wanna do any type of brush hunting where you need a round that can punch through some brush without getting too much deviation, uh, you definitely wanna consider the 4570 government round. It's a big boy. It is definitely gonna recoil, but you are gonna love every minute of shooting it, I assure you. If you like this video, please click like down below and subscribe to this channel for more gear reviews, training, and gun news. If you wanna come train with us, please make it happen. Sign up at tacticalifornia.net for either a tactical handgun class or a California carbine class. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram, linked below. 
And if you want to support the channel, patreon.com slash tacticalifornia. I'm Micah with Tactic California. Thanks for watching.